the most important feature that you want to have to have a market produce desired outcomes is to ensure that the incentives are set in such a way to produce the outcomes you want. As many people have commented, the problem with incentives is that you get exactly what you incentivize. And I think that part of the issue facing the NHS is that right now there is a lack of clarity about how to set incentives to achieve desired goals. Uh, in, in addition, there's a great deal of focus on structure. That is, how should commissioning be organized? How should care provision be organized? And so on. These are very, very important issues. In fact, they're fundamental to the performance of the system. But from an American perspective, we typically view the organization as the product of the incentives rather than trying to refine organization in order to achieve desired goals. So uh, a big part of the, uh, the challenge facing the NHS is that several types of levers that you might use are, are out of bounds. For example, there cannot be price competition, we are told. And price competition is generally considered fundamental in most markets to uh, improve performance. And there are very good reasons why in healthcare you wouldn't want pure unfettered price competition. So in the US, we have highly regulated price competition. It's regulated, for example, in the sense that certain services must be covered by every insurer. Uh, we do have our version of any willing provider laws that, that mean that that uh, insurers, in many instances, must contract with all physicians uh, who choose to enter into an agreement. And these limit the kinds of products that you can offer. Uh, and also, there, there are various other features in regulation that, that are so extensive. Um, it, every state, for example, has separate regulations governing medical care, which have effects on competition, which have effects on the structure of healthcare delivery. For example, a nurse, cannot provide all the services that nurses would argue they are capable of providing due to uh, what are called scope of practice regulations. Ultimately, that is reflected in health system performance. Depending on which side of the issue you're on, you might say that improves quality or you might say it artificially raises price. In the UK, what I see the risk is, uh, is of having a regulatory political solution that is going to impair flexibility. And when you impair flexibility, you impair your ability to be efficient. And in particular, you limit your ability to respond rapidly to changing conditions. New medical innovations, new ideas about how to deliver and practice medical care, new ideas about how different care providers should work together. There is the risk that you set up a framework that severely limits your ability to make changes that could improve efficiency. You may have a structure that is absolutely optimal for today and be woefully out of date in two years.